Joining us tonight, Victoria Tensing, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division of the Justice Department. Great to see you. And former Federal Prosecutor Joe DeGeneva. They're the founding partners of DeGeneva and Tensing Law Firm. Uh, great to see you both. Uh, your reaction to Herridge, uh, Herridge's reporting uh, on what we, we've known that James Baker, the general counsel of the FBI, was at the nexus of what was going on. But now that we're starting to see some color uh, shape around this thing, uh, this looks, uh, frankly, worse than I thought uh, and very peculiar in the way in which uh, a lawyer with connections to the Democratic Party, the DNC, the Clinton campaign, is suddenly a conduit uh, for what turned out to be sheer trash and fraud uh, being called a dossier. Your thoughts, Victoria? Well, Lou, this is no surprise at all. We've been saying for, what, seven, eight months now mm -hmm. that there was a brazen plot to clear Hillary Clinton of any criminal wrongdoing and to frame Donald Trump. And we've known for a very long time that Perkins Cooley was involved in it. Now, let's see. Surprise. Um, a top person in the FBI, the general counsel, met with a lawyer who represents officially the DNC and Perkins Cooley is saying, oh, we really Can didn't I have any of our fingerprints on it? I hate to do it? this, if I may, Victoria, Joe, uh, the president right now talking about the Kavanaugh confirmation and uh, he's in uh, Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota, at a uh, Make America Great rally. Here he is. We want beautiful environment. We want... But you don't have to have regulation that makes it impossible for our country to compete with other countries. And that's what we're doing. The Democrats want to cripple law enforcement. They want to get rid of ICE. How about ICE? ICE, they're tough and they love our country. But you need tough ones, they're tough. They love our country. They get rid of MS-13, they get rid of these gangs, you wouldn't believe it. They throw them the hell out or they bring them to jail. The Democrats embrace socialism. We're not going to be Venezuela, you see what's happening. And open our borders to deadly drugs and violent gangs. You know, there's a campaign said, going on in Minnesota. And he's making it clear uh, which of the Republican candidates he's supporting there uh, and the distinction between Republicans and Democrats, a bright line, if you would, that he's drawing at that rally uh, in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, Victoria, I apologize, and we'll be going back to the president uh, whenever he moves to uh, uh, the current uh, issues and topics, including the Kavanaugh, uh, the Kavanaugh confirmation, which tonight, by the way, there seems to be an additional... Uh, question mark, uh, uh, and that uh, Senator Daines of Montana, who is now saying he will be attending his daughter's wedding uh, instead of voting for a, a justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Lou, I figure uh, that's been worked out. I figure that maybe they have Pence in there to vote for cloture, which is what's going to happen tomorrow. It's not a vote for Kavanaugh tomorrow. So I, I, I would assume that they've got this worked out. And just to finish my thought um, about Perkins Coie, that my last sentence would be, they don't want to be a defendant in a civil lawsuit by anybody for having done this. And that's why they're trying to wash their hands and say, oh, he wasn't under our auspices when he was meeting with the FBI. Bull. Joe, your thoughts? Well, I think the entire <clears throat> uh, House of Cards is falling down. James Baker, who was the former general counsel of the FBI, was fired. He is now cooperating Keep in a federal out. investigation of James Comey and other people uh, for the various crimes that they committed when they were at the top of the FBI and the Department of Justice. Uh, the, the revelation that he made today shows that Perkins Coie was at the center of all of the activities involving a Fusion GPS uh, and Mr. Sussman allegedly handing information mm. on his own without relationship to any client to the FBI concerning uh, the dossier. This is utter nonsense. Um, the, they are trying to separate themselves from the rather large gathering of evidence that Perkins Coie was at the center of the plot, along with Fusion GPS, to create false information that would be fed to U.S. intelligence from overseas to put a, put a FISA warrant on Carter Page. It's fairly obvious, and ultimately, Perkins Coie is going to be sued.
It, it is. I think that they have played not only a pivotal role here, as we learned again very early in this process. And by the way, I want to. I think I'm correct in saying this, Joe. Joe De Geneva was the first person to, uh, if you will forgive me, to point this out. Uh, he was the first person to call this a frame up uh, of the president of the United States, and uh, it looks like this law firm. Uh, Perkins Coie and uh, and the smear merchants, Fusion GPS, were uh, at the center of all of that with that exact intent. Well, Lou, what was fairly obvious, uh, right after James Comey held his famous July 5th, 2016 news conference exonerating Hillary Clinton, it was obvious that something was afoot. It, uh, later on, we learned that not only were they trying to exonerate Hillary Clinton so that she could win, but that if she lost, they were going to frame Donald Trump. We found that precisely what they were trying to do as a result of the text messages from Strzok and Page. That happened several months later. Once you have the Strzok and Page text messages, mm -hmm. this isn't a conspiracy theory by some group of crazy people. It's fundamental law enforcement facts on the record that this plot was in existence. And now we know from James Baker that Perkins Coie was part of it. Uh, Perkins Coie and, and Fusion GPS. The yes. Justice Department has not only been not been aggressive, they've actually <laughs> appeared to be running from them, as yeah. has the FBI. So the corruption that we're talking about at the highest levels of the FBI is still active. It is still a major barrier to enforcing law and bringing, uh, bringing to ground and holding accountable uh, a, a group of people uh, who are lawbreakers and, frankly, traitors to, the, to this, this country. Victoria? Uh, there's, there, the, uh, Lou, there's a gross, horrible, ugly similarity here between the, the Fusion GPS and all of the, the framing mm -hmm. of Donald Trump and the Brett Kavanaugh situation. Right. Under this world we live in now, the Democrats have no problem making up allegations about somebody and putting them into a legal system to use them as a legal weapon on the person. They right. did this with FISA against the Trump in the Trump campaign, and now they did it with Brett Kavanaugh. All three of those women were telling false stories. And at least two of them, because they'll never go after mm -hmm. Miss Ford, but two of them should be investigated and prosecuted for making false statements and interfering with a, a, a Senate uh, hearing. I want to ask both of you, uh, uh, Alan Dershowitz, making the recommendation that, uh, that the Justice Department should be going after and pursuing aggressively uh, any witness who lies uh, yes. and before the United States Senate. Uh, Absolutely. And, well, and, and, you know, we've had the opposite effect. Uh, we've watched this uh, become a place where it's just an arena in which you can hurl untruths uh, at will. And, by the way, count on about 90 percent of everything you hear being a lie from the left. Uh, well, w w what has to be done is... Uh, Alan's correct, and we've been talking about this for quite some time. Once it was clear that Ms. Ramirez had, had falsely right. made an accusation, uh, and once it was clear that Dr. Ford's testimony was completely uncorroborated and, I believe, completely false. Mm -hmm. And once Ms. Swetnick's uh, affidavit was submitted to the committee, the committee has to make a referral, uh, I believe, of all three people to the Justice Department and ask for a criminal investigation because that is mm -hmm. the way you deter people from making false allegations during confirmation proceedings. These people were all seeking publicity in, 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 in uh, Ford's situation, I think she was seeking some sort of psychological repose. But the, the problem with her story is yeah. it just doesn't fit together at all. No. Yeah. And there are so many questions and questions that weren't asked uh, <laughs> by the Republicans or the Democrats, the Democrats of Kavanaugh, uh, the Republicans of Ford. It, it's just the most bizarre uh, set of hearings uh, that I could imagine for the Supreme Court. Yeah. And Lou, we don't stop with we don't stop with those just those three. We also have to refer the lawyers because, according to Miss Ford, her right. two lawyers didn't tell her that Grassley offered to talk to her right. anytime, anywhere. So that was a, a violation of the professional rules of responsibility, 
And Avenatti, I think maybe he ought to be referred, don't you, if he uh, brought in this well, ridiculous as my uh, great witness? colleague Tucker Carlson says, the creepy porn lawyer <laughs> uh, seems unworthy of much, but worthy of investigation, certainly. Thanks so much. Victoria Tensing, Joe DeGeneva, thank you both for being here.